Hello, John Patello, co-manager of the Strategic Income team at Henderson. I'd like to speak about peak everything. Um, it struck us that there's a lot of talk about peak oil, something I used to write um, old economics essays about, peak government more recently, peak tech. Do you know anyone without a smartphone? Um, peak globalization, it's kind of quite interesting. Martin Wolf had a piece in the FT last week on that. Um, peak car, um, we've written about this before. The average car only moves 4% of the time. We don't need any more cars in the world. We just probably will share cars going forward. And arguably, US auto production is peaking out as we speak. And most recently, peak stuff, coined by the IKEA executive, Steve Howard, who really said, well, our living rooms couldn't buy or have any more stuff in it already. We already have enough stuff. We actually consume less than we used to have. So that idea of peaks and troughs, I think, is quite pertinent in a market perspective. We have peaks in equity markets, NASDAQ, S&P. We have peaks in record low bond yields, um, given the amount of asset inflation that QE has fostered. And then we have a whole list of troughs. We have a very long, elongated, subpar economic cycle. So currently we have troughs really in GDP, in inflation, productivity, um, trade. World trade is shrinking, not growing, which relates back to my peak globalization point. Um, and in credit demand, there's very little credit demand in the world. Um, so that peace and trucks context, I, I think, is quite pertinent when we look at the economic cycle. Now, John Bennett, uh, one of my equity colleagues, recently did a, a very good video about this cycle is different. And he was very skeptical, as are we, on the cyclicals. Because in a traditional sense, you'd expect the cyclicals to rally back. Um, but when there's really no growth, no excess demand in the economies, all we see are certain industries, a massive excess capacity in industries such as airlines and shipping and steel and autos and retail. So he, he reckons some of the cyclicals are a bit of a value trap. They look cheap, but in fact, they're cheap for a good reason. And we're very skeptical of the cyclical industries in, in our world, in the corporate bond world, because they haven't got any pricing power. They've got massive excess capacity. Uh, and generally, that doesn't lead to a good investment. Now, I think the traditional textbooks would say, well, the economies are coming back, cyclicals are strong, there's some sort of reflation going on in the world, but our view is really the opposite. Um, and in that original view, an excess demand will cause inflation. But all we see is excess supply, excess supply of many, many industries. And then some of those industries not only have excess supply, but they also have a massive threat from the internet and Uber and Airbnb uh, and so on. So we're really struggling to see how inflation rears ahead. We certainly accept in the UK headline inflation will rise next year because we're going to be importing quite a lot of inflation with the depreciation in the pound. This is exactly what happened post the financial crisis in 2008, where CPI peaked at 5.2% um, because we were importing inflation. But it wasn't persistent wage inflation. It wasn't persistent goods inflation. Um, and hence, we, we don't think that's the sort of inflation we need to worry about as bond investors. So having said all of that, you could say, well, what about bonds? Aren't we at peak bond? Well, not really. We're actually more worried about a downturn in the US economy and the world economy than the bond market blowing up in a bubble-like sense. We're probably more worried about a lack of economic growth manifesting itself in probably lower bond yields. And that's the sort of Japanese and Japanization theme that we've been talking about for a long time, citing Richard Koo and Larry Summers and other notable um, authors for which we had a lot of sympathy with. So in this slightly subpar world, what on earth are we doing? Well, Brexit's been remarkably positive for, for our funds. Interest rates have come down, credit spreads have come in. The Bank of England is buying corporate bonds, as is the ECB. So there's a massive bond drought going on here. So the technicals are superly supportive. Um, we tend to favor large cap, non-cyclical businesses and reason to accept financial organizations. And we think going forward, that makes a lot of sense for our investors. So if you like, we have peak everything. Thank you very much for listening.